Hey everyone. So I wanted to come on and make a video today. And when I tuned into spirit to see what exactly I should talk about, because I had a few different downloads come in that I wanted to share. And I was just like wondering, you know, um, which way to lean or if I just should share everything. And I was very surprised because what came through is they wanted me to share this automatic writing experience. Um, I had this lucid dream and then I had some down, like very powerful downloads after it. I was like, after I woke up from it and I was like very connected. And then the downloads, I just start jotting them down because I would eventually want to share them. Sometimes I don't share them. Sometimes I do. And as I was jotting them down, um, spirit started to, to write through me. It was actually a combination of my guides, which is just at different aspects of me and my higher self, which is basically the accumulation of all those connected to source. So, um, and then I'm going to share this with you guys again and, um, I know I'm going to continuously share this along the way because it's a, a visual that I was given. If you've been following me for a while, you might have already seen the video where I explain the breakdown of this, but they're asking me to use it often in my videos whenever I explain my experience, um, like channeling and stuff with automatic writing or anything like that. So you, so we start to understand like what it means and I also got information <clears throat> in the download about this, what it means to, to be, to have lived all these lifetimes, what is the higher self, how does that come through you, um, so yeah, I want to share this again, which is basically an illustration, oh darn, I'm seeing right now because I have the reverse camera on, it's coming out backwards, but basically what this is, is all these circles inside the large circle are your unique soul lifetime. So these are all the lifetimes. And there's so many lifetimes, I wouldn't have been able to fit, fit all those circles within this large one. And the large, big circle represents your higher self. So you understand that when your guides come through, and no, there's angels and stuff that come through that aren't necessarily um, one of your past, you know, unique soul signature lifetimes but um for the most part it's you coming through to guide yourself from a previous lifetime so your higher self is like a drop in the ocean the ocean being source therefore there is no differentiation when you put that drop inside of the ocean you can't just <laughs> Uh, it's a part of the one, a part of the all. That's why the ocean, the drop of, of water within the ocean or the speck of sand within all of the, the beaches is a beautiful example of oneness because once you put that sand down in the beach, it's just all the same, you know? It's all part of the one. And so they gave me this, I think they gave me this back in the beginning of the year or the end of last year, um... Yeah, so all these smaller circles are just all your lifetimes. It's just a it's just a quick, simple illustration to understand. So when the reason I wanted to bring that through with this is because when I do automatic writing, I realize the tenses of the way spirit comes through change. And what I also recognize is when I'm speaking in one tense, it's coming through as my higher self, where when they speak in the third person, it seems to be an aspect of me or a guide, one of my guides from a different lifetime that's coming through with that information. But they hold higher vibrational frequencies, so they're connected to that, you know, higher path, higher timeline. And they are trying to guide us through it. But it's not really they, it's you in a different form. And it's just like getting used to speaking this way and understanding these things. So when spirit starts to come through you, you can use that discernment. And when other things try to come through you or try to use you as a channel, you can use that discernment. Because there's a lot of deception, um, especially when people are come in with really obvious gifts and they start channeling whoever and they haven't really developed like 
as a person with integrity and like really um, done the shadow work to the degree where they have that level of discernment to understand, hey, this person's just like, or this entity or this energy is just posing as this to get me to consent to something or get me to accept a belief or what have you. And when somebody comes through and they give you mostly truth and then they just throw in that little nugget of um, uh, energy that doesn't support the highest timeline, that's when your discernment needs to come in and you have to really, um, for me, I feel like the reason it's so easy for me to discern is because I feel it in my body. So for instance, if I'm listening to something or I'm seeing something and everything, you know, okay, yeah, that sounds like they're, they're really flowing with some cool stuff that I resonate with. And then all of a sudden something comes up. I'll feel it through my whole body. My higher self is like, no, like, no, like, is this divine? That's what you need to ask yourself when all of a sudden you're feeling something come up and you're watching maybe a spiritual teacher. I'm telling you this because the, the community right now is being, and it has been, infiltrated by um, lower vibrational energies that are trying to manipulate through people who are still sitting in programming that may not be able to discern. If you think that, and, and you know, who, what, what is her name? I heard her speak on this last night. This is like so, it's so in the air right now, this whole like <laughs> false teachers thing. And it's weird because I keep getting so many synchronicities. I'll watch something, I'll feel weird about it, then I'll hear somebody say something about it. I'm like, oh, I felt weird about it too. You know what I mean? I don't even want to start. Like, I heard somebody speaking on it, somebody I respect last night, and she was seeing it too. And I was just like, yo. <laughs> We really have to turn on our spidey senses and recognize. And so that's why I wanted to share how I recognized when I was automatic writing the difference just between my higher self and an aspect of me guiding me. Because I have not activated um, the clairvoyance to the degree where I can just see the, the in my third eye whatever being or whatever is connecting through me I receive the messages and then I have to feel so for me I love that because it's easy to discern through feeling do you feel shitty or does it make you feel full of love or you feel good you know what I mean it's pretty simple but I feel like I know um it's not that easy for everybody just like it's not easy for me to see through my third eye yet because that's I'm not ready to step into that gift I am on a certain path and that is supposed to come in at a certain time for a very important reason and I still raise my frequency that doesn't mean I'm less for some reason spirit want to talk I was definitely not thinking I was going to go this deep into it but that doesn't mean I feel less or I am less advanced than somebody who's had their third eye open from jump Lance has his, had his open since he was since birth and has experienced literal physical beings in front of him to the point where he's desensitized to it and that is also for a reason I think because of his mission and his journey that he still has to play out like wow to be first of all to be able to even see a being is like you're really turned on clairvoyantly and then to be able to watch it walk through the wall out of your room and like this is happening to you since the day or you know what I mean like you're really turned on um clairvoyantly and and that is for a reason because he's on his journey and maybe he's gonna have to interact with beings um far in the future or soon who knows but like he's desensitized to that for a reason he has been literally working with seeing these things since he was a child so he could come into it now where if I would see something show up in my room I'd probably crap my pants and be freaked out and not ready for it because all that fear would come up because I've never experienced that before right and so like but that's not for me because I'm on here connecting with my higher self connecting with different aspects of myself channeling messages to help others heal and face their shadow and understand through doing it myself and sharing my own experience. So that was my path, right? We have like to start thinking about 
spirituality in unique ways instead of being like, how can I force a Kundalini awakening? How can I force my gift of clear audience or clairvoyance or whatever the hell gift you want to open up? How can I force that in? Are you kidding me? This is not a competition. I understand that we were raised in programming and competition, but that's not what this is about. This is very unique and individual. What if I never open up my clairvoyance, but I keep flowing and raising my vibration? I don't care. I don't care. I really don't. That might not even be my mission now. This might be my last lifetime, and I don't even fuck with clairvoyance the whole time. Why do we have to fit everything in a box? I could blast open all my chakras and just like, whatever, you know? I'm sure that I will if that happens, right? But the, I'm trying to make a point here. I'm not trying to sit here and be like, well, technically this is, and go back and forth with each other about, it's the point I'm trying to make. The point I'm trying to make is there's nothing you have to force. There's nothing you have to obtain. There's nothing you have to do, but feel good. Figure out how to feel good being a human being in this matrix, interacting with people. And those who are so focused on diving into information and channeling all these different things and blah, blah, blah. And like getting up on a soapbox and not actually saying, hey, this is where I face my shadows in my life. This is how I integrate it. Just going into the matrix and making an impact on everybody around me. This isn't about like, oh, I've achieved this. I've achieved that. I'm the, like, I wrote this book. I did that. It doesn't matter. There's amazing people who have wrote amazing books and I appreciate them, but there's some people out here using spirituality. And, and the thing of it is as a way to make money and to use people and to just be a part of what's trendy and, and to feel alive. And, and that's fine to feel alive in the terms of like feeding off their egos, feeding off of things. And, and the, the, the thing of it is, it's not about throwing the baby out with the bathwater because most of these people are on their awakening journey. They're stuck in a trauma. And their trauma, unfortunately for them, as spiritual pe- uh, teachers who have put themselves out there, and now they're playing by default, they're not sharing their shadow. They're not out there just giving just to give, not to expect anything in return. They're going to have to face their shadow a- a- anyways. And now, what does that shadow entail? It, 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 it's going to entail being exposed publicly. Because you put yourself out there publicly and you refuse to be genuinely authentic and vulnerable. And now, you, by default, will be forced to face your shadow in a very out, like, outed way. Where everybody, it's for everybody to see. Because that is what the shadow is that you're dealing with to begin with. I don't even like want to talk about this anymore because I don't want to come off in a judgmental way, but at the same time, like use discernment, please use discernment. That's why I'm talking about this stuff. So, you know, understand what it means. You understand when you're connecting to something and whether you see it or not, like feel it. How does it feel? All right. So let's dive into this because I'm just ranting and raving and, um, probably triggering a bunch of people. Uh, (laughs) you're welcome. Face your shadow. Okay. So, okay. So like I said, initially, first of all, I want to say it, this was in January. I wanted to share it then. They told me it was not the right time and when it's the right time, it will. So I was like, cool. I literally printed everything out. It's like, I think it's like eight to 10 pages or something of me just channeling and direct ready. I'm not reading the whole thing. I'm reading the aspects because a lot of it was very personal, but a lot, um, and I am sharing some personal stuff, but I want to share the stuff that I feel like, um, will be most helpful for you guys too. Cause some of this stuff is just relevant to me and like, it ain't about y'all. It's about me and that aspect. And I don't want to, um, waste anyone's time just listening to stuff they wanted to tell me about very specific things about my life. Okay. So Initially, it started out as downloads. So this is what the downloads were. This isn't the automatic writing. This is what I was like, all of a sudden it was coming through me. Okay, so I was having these thoughts. I said, I kept feeling over the past few days that the incarnation, the incarnation was not exactly as I had thought it worked in the sense of that many spiritual teachers describe it. They speak of it in a very linear way. 
Like the person Dylan, who I was, that died in 1982 before Kelsey came along, was not who I was exactly before I chose to incarnate as Kelsey. Basically, spirit told me that I have come from the future where I vibrate so high that I could not be in a physical body. So yes, I was Dylan, but I did not come from Dylan, then into Kelsey. I went from Dylan to another incarnation. I'm honestly not sure of the order because that is linear and not how the universe works. I hope you understand what I'm trying to say. Basically, I came from the future into Kelsey. But if you understand this, you'll grasp what it is what I'm saying. Okay. Okay. Now comes the automatic writing. This is when I start realizing, whoa, this isn't just me writing down my own thoughts in a download. This is like, um, this was my higher self coming through. And I know that because of the way, it, um, what is this? The way that spirit speaks to me, you'll see. You'll see. I'll explain it after I read it because it'll be more understanding. Okay. So you are the light. You are God experience, experiencing itself through you. Rise. Don't allow darkness to hold you down. Knowingness is what makes you rise up into your truth. Non-linear timeline. You didn't just come from Dylan's time because I was thinking these things. So all of a sudden spirit came through with an answer, which was crazy because I was thinking all these things like, wait a minute. I didn't just come from there. You know, I was just like, it was those epiphanies coming up. So this was the response. It said, you didn't just come from Dylan's time. You were already advanced then. All darkness from this lifetime came from this lifetime to help you clear the lineages you chose to be born into. Seriously dense bloodlines. Your soul came directly from the future, a higher vibrational timeline. This is why you struggle to stay grounded in human form, hence your chronic fainting. I have a condition called vasovagal syncope where I faint very easily. My vagus nerve is like triggered very easily and I have like chronically low blood pressure. I've talked about it in other videos. But anyways, I have a hard time staying grounded. I am, yeah. So anyways, why, okay, this is why you're hyperproductive. It had to be this way for you to stay grounded. One reason, it's another reason why you had four children is to keep you active in this reality and grounded. To give those children your light every day. Notice they mostly only interact with you and each other. Which, okay. Your children keep you balanced in feminine energy as well because we had to make you hyper productive in masculine energy to stay grounded. Which means if I'm not doing things, I'm like so ungrounded. And it's true. <laughs> but when I was a kid, um, in a teenager and all that and I was just like randomly passing out I didn't know what grounding was I wasn't I was completely asleep and going through trauma at the time and I think um some of the passing out was detachment because of the trauma so there was a lot but I don't pass out anymore I have complete control over it as soon as I started my spiritual awakening it stopped happening okay I'm gonna stop going on tangents okay it says, paint the balance. Your sun and moon are in Libra for a reason. You chose this. You chose it all. And there's some little things in there I keep out because it, it's a lot. Okay. Okay. You're a grid worker holding very high frequencies for the collective. We need many from the future to come back from being solely light beings to hold this light for Gaia. Kelsey didn't need obvious gifts to realize this. She could easily remember who she is without those. Your obvious gifts like clairvoyance or clairaudience could not come forward in the beginning of this lifetime because you needed to experience much darkness for your mission. You could not remember who you truly are too soon. Your sensitivity was crucial and not remembering initially was essential to experience much trauma in order to alchemize it for the bloodlines you came to clear. Do not be afraid to share the darkness you've experienced. You've already overcame these things and the shame tied to it. Okay. Gets better. I was almost disappointed that they weren't going to let me share this with you. But months later, here it is. Okay. So I was in like a trance-like state. I've had past life regressions. I've passed, I've regressed myself. I know when I'm use that time where you're in that space if you get there wisely so finally I'm to this point where I'm like okay ask some questions if you're in that space start asking questions so 
I asked about my relationship. I'm not um, reading the whole thing, but I wanted to read this little section. And this is funny because this is when I realized it was an aspect of myself giving me this message. It changed to an aspect of myself instead of my higher self because the tense changed. You'll, the tense of the way they, it's being spoken has changed. The way I'm typing it is so weird. Okay. It says, we want her to understand, this is relationship based. We want her to understand that when she tries to make him, my partner, understand or pressure him about using his gifts, this only repels his, de his desire to do so. If there is any area that she could work on the most at this time, it is patience and understanding. Speak less, just be. By being, she is the example for him, and he will step into his role in their divine mission much more quickly. Okay. And then um, somebody had asked me about parenting. And they, they gave me some information about my children and some advice. So I think that... Um, I wanted to share this as well because I think um, any parents out there might find some value. Okay, your children chose you because they knew you would allow them independence. It is a little bit personal, but there's some um, gems in there. They are all advanced souls. You know which ones are most sensitive, two of your sons, and they will require more attention than the other two who are already fully activated in their chakra system. The attention they require is love and reassurance based on their sensitivity as being empaths and taking on the energies of the collective that are coming up at this time. You know exactly how to support them based on your own gift of being a highly sensitive empath. Again, your other two children, son and daughter, just require you to provide for them their basic needs physically and very much love. Continue to have those conversations about how the universe works. Once you activate these things within them, there's not much to do but be proud of the little light warriors who grow into advanced old souls on this earth, assisting Gaia in this beautiful time we are in. Do not worry about their physical father. As you've already noticed, he will not interfere with this process. His soul is on his own journey. Follow your, own, follow your intuition on how to parent them without concern of what others' opinions are. You and your children have an enormous amount of protection around you at all times. You all have a great mission here at this time. It will not waver. You are already in the thick of it and have seen how all is well in this regard already. You are doing a great job. Again, just show them and your divine partner how to be. This is your most important endeavor at this time, for it will assist you all greatly, and the collective as well, in holding the light as a grid worker. Your creations will be very, very powerful. You will be provided the space to unfold and prepare a very sacred place. And when they said that, I knew exactly what they were talking about. Because um, that's me and Lance's plan anyways. It said, Spirit will absolutely guide you to the location that this will be. Be patient. Do not force it merely because you know it is supposed to happen. This is about us buying land. I know it is. Flow with the universe. All of the co all uh, Allow the co-creation to be effortless. This will be how you can discern if you are on the path to this. It will feel effortless. You will blink and it will be. We will... We understand that because of your traits of being highly productive, you try to force manifest manifestation at times. Remember, dear one, it is about being, not doing. Yes, the 3D mind thinks it needs to do, but a higher aspect of you to which you are speaking right now is telling you that doing comes in the beingness. That is all for now from infinite love and light. And so that was the message that... Um, came through back in January and I wanted to share it but I guess right now is the, a good time to share it um yeah guys please use discernment please use discernment when um this week is like this last couple of days I'm like sincerely concerned <laughs> about people like in the spiritual community guys if something is not of the highest good of all and it doesn't resonate with you and it doesn't feel good inside of you recognize that just because a person is very connected doesn't mean they don't have trauma that they're not projecting on others and I'm talking about spiritual teachers have your spider senses like your spidey senses I have three boys so you know I'm going to talk about spidey senses so don't go and take that in a dark direction people who do that are projecting trauma too it's like I don't ever want to feel like I'm coming on camera and I can't just like openly speak without somebody taking something that it came from a place of good intention and just like running with it and I want you guys to know 
that um, normally I wouldn't want to come on here and like say like there's people in the spiritual community that are have a lot of love and good in them, but they also are going through their own trauma. They are also playing that out on a very public scale. And that's okay. And we can hold space for them. We can, and we can hold that love for them. But it, in the same respect, we can't, we can't support like low vibrational energies that don't support the highest timeline of all. We have to be focused on mission. And that's another thing. That's another way to discern. Like, does this person seem focused on mission or focused on their own ego? Is the ego in the driver's seat? And when I say ego, like, you know, you can run off on a million different tangents on what ego means to somebody. But ego is just that aspect. What aspect of them is in the driver's seat? Is it their higher self? Or is it something else? You know what I mean? And so ego is just that person playing out their own traumas and they're allowing themselves to come from a place of trauma in the way that, in in whatever thing that they're describing. Maybe it's just one belief. Maybe everything they say you resonate with and there's just this one thing, you know. You don't have to throw the baby out with the bathwater, but you can throw that belief that they're trying to push onto you that doesn't feel good inside of you. You can throw that shit out, right? So that doesn't mean we're like, oh, burn them all at the stake. Like what? No. Are we rising in our consciousness or what? Can we recognize that somebody's probably going through some trauma right now? Can we recognize that I recognize as a spiritual teacher that I have my own shit. And guess what? I come on here and talk about my own shit. But it's not always that simple. Some people um, are still going through that. And they're going through it in a different way than me. They're going through it on a publicly and I can see that I'm reading the energy of it so can we hold that love for them can we like recognize where we can't be caught up in the in the bullshit but also recognize that um this person's already come a long way they're caught up in this little spot and it happens to be on mass and it could affect a lot of people if a lot of people are like um resonating I wouldn't even say resonating. If other people are in their ego or a vibrational match to that concept that they're trying to push, that could be detrimental to that person. So yeah, it's a big deal when a spiritual teacher comes out and they're in their ego and they have um, they have this impact on those who, the collective, because there's a lot of people who, you know, listen to what they have to say. So we do have to come and speak about it, but we can also hold that space coming from a high coming from a higher space of love saying hey this person just needs help but we can't let this happen either because we have to like we have to come together and support the highest timeline so feel into that feel feel that's how you discern you feel I feel like I have a lot to give people because that's what my gift is. It's feeling. To me, it seems so obvious. A lot of things seem obvious to me because I'm feeling and I can't be tricked by a picture in my fucking mind. You don't get tricked by a feeling. Either this shit feels good or it does not feel good. <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying? So like when I'm in my ego and I'm looking at my twin flame, Lance, who I've been going through this forever. Oh my gosh, you want to freaking grow, go through that journey and actually stay in it and work together and try to unconditionally love each other while you freaking annoying the crap of each other at the same time. And then you come to this space like, whoa, it was me the whole time. And they come to this space, whoa, it was me the whole time. And you love each other unconditionally. And it's this big thing. That takes so much fucking breaking down, building yourself up, breaking down, building yourself up. And, um, yeah, some people are experiencing the breaking down and building themselves up in different ways. I chose to do it this way. I, and there's another thing that might be a little controversial that I'm going to mention. I've noticed a lot of the same people that I see, like, they have a lot to give. But then I'm like, whoa, 
are the same people who are very like they um they're very like go be experimental sexually go like the hypersexuality in the spiritual community kind of aligns with a lot of the stuff but maybe that's just my soul not resonating with that way of expressing too so that could be something for me and to not you know to be a little less in a space of judgment which I'm not trying to be but I still feel a little aspect of my human it's just like how is this divine you know what I mean I see people being hypersexual I'm like I'm just expressing myself <laughs> I'm just like then my mind goes is this divine is this divine but is this judgment maybe a little bit you know what I mean and being freaking humble enough to have those conversations with yourself so yeah like <laughs> this video is like wild this is not what I thought I was gonna talk about I didn't even want to talk about everything going on in the spiritual community but I think that people clearly need to hear it because um it's just really I feel it inside of me, like, Spirit's like, no, you're not getting off this camera, and so you keep saying certain things that are going to trigger things in people so they recognize it, and they can use that discernment, but yeah, you guys know I'm here just for the love, I'm here working off donations, and I don't even ask for them most of the time, I'm putting it down below in the comments if you want to leave a donation, I'm here to give my energy not my energy, but love and to give the, I don't want to say my energy because that, that's just like giving away your energy is not what you do, but to channel through myself the love and the messages that are going to help raise the collective consciousness. That is what I'm here to do. I don't give a fuck about money. I don't. And I say that and people are like, oh, you shouldn't say it like that. You shouldn't say you don't give a fuck about money. Because I know that my currency is my vibration. So as long as my vibration is high, I'm a vibrational match to everything that I could possibly desire. Which will come to me. If it requires money, that money will be there. Think about it this way. Everything is vibration. Everything is about feeling good. Everything is about looking at somebody in, in a loving, high vibrational way and saying, I see your pain. I see why you're projecting this way sexually in a hypersexual way. I see why you're projecting this way um, operating from trauma responses from your ego. When you're like feeling shitty, you should never like speak. When you're in a low vibrational space or something comes to you and you're feeling a low vibrational space, don't trust it. Don't speak on it. Just wait. Just observe. Just go find something else to be like, I'm going to go appreciate this over here because I'm having a hard time appreciating this person who's annoying the hell out of me right now. Or this job that's getting me frustrated. I'm going to be there, but I'm going to choose not to focus on the fact that it's fucking frustrating. I'm in this marriage that I've been in for years and years and years and I had children and I'm afraid to leave. But you know what? I'm just going to be my best me today for my kids. I'm going to fill my own cup for my kids and I'm going to be my best me and I'm not going to blame shit on my husband. Because guess what? He isn't the one that dictates the way I feel. I am. And if I keep raising my vibration and being happy no matter what situation I'm in, I will vibrate my ass right out of that situation and into something better that's a match to my present vibration that I just raised. And you will be floored by how the universe moves you in and out of situations, in and out of experiences, because you're choosing that. You're choosing how you feel no matter what situation you're in. And that's mastery. You're choosing to love somebody no matter how much they piss you off or trigger you. You're choosing to understand the reason that they would even come from that space is because of pain. The reason that you would even like come at somebody or get frustrated with somebody is because of pain that doesn't even have to do with the situation you're pissed off about to begin with. It has to do with you and the stuff that you haven't dealt with inside of you. Otherwise, you would be unfazed, unbothered. You'd be the observer. You wouldn't even think about being triggered. You'd be like, nothing I can do about it. All I can do is feel, feel good and see the silver lining in the fact that I got a flat tire right now and it's raining out, right? And then all of a sudden, 
you see that silver lining and spirit sends you someone to help you or whatever you miss being in a car accident that was miles ahead because you ended up getting a flat tire if you don't think that your higher self you all those aspects of you all your guides all the angels aren't looking out for you then if you don't think that and don't believe that you won't be a vibrational match to that but if you think it, believe it, know it, see the silver lining in every situation, choose higher vibrations, you will be a match to everything. You are a walking fucking miracle, just like I made in, um, I channeled in um, my last video. You have to own it. You have to become sovereign. You have to feel into things. You have to recognize what's best for you. No one's going to be able to tell you because you aren't them and they aren't you. They are in the aspect of we're all one, but this specific soul aspect of you that's on this mission and has this journey and is a unique soul signature that has something to give this world that isn't like anyone else has to give, because how is that helping anything? Somebody else is already giving from that aspect. Why do we want to be like everybody else? What unique thing do you have to give to the world? That's what's going to raise the vibration when we all collectively come together with something different because we are all different. We all are unique. We all channel spirit in a different way. We all activate certain gifts at different times. But yeah. <laughs> Sorry guys, getting on a little flow there. I love you so much and um, use discernment, feel into things. Everything's always working out for you. Just grab on to that. Grab on to the knowingness. I love you guys.